How's it going? I'm Martin, and I lead marketing for Flutter. It's an honor to be here. Thank you for welcoming us to this uh, keynote stage. Let's see if the slides go up. There we go. All right, so Flutter is Google's portable UI toolkit for building apps on Android, iOS, and the web, among other places. But before we get started, I'm really curious, who here is a mobile developer? OK, about 50%. What about web developer? Very nice. Who here has already heard of Flutter? Wow, about half the room. Who has actually used Flutter or built something with Flutter already? Nice. OK. <laughs> so it seems like we have a difference uh, in terms of exposure to Flutter and knowledge of Flutter. So this is how we're going to structure the talk. Um, we're going to start with just a very quick overview of what Flutter is um, and why it really matters at Google and beyond. Then we're actually going to hack on some Flutter code live on stage. So hopefully the demo gods are with us today. And then we're actually going to have some partners talk to you and show us you some other really cool demos. So I mentioned what Flutter is. But a lot of times when we talk about Flutter, we do it with four pillars. So we say that Flutter is beautiful, Flutter is fast, Flutter is productive, and Flutter is open. So let me dive into each one of these for a little bit. The reason Flutter is beautiful is because Flutter allows you to paint every pixel to the screen. Everything in Flutter is a widget, which is customizable, which means that you as a developer have full control over your application. We also have some app, uh, widgets that we give you, such as the Material Design and Cupertino widgets, so you can make your app look to certain platforms. So you can also customize them to make it a very brand-driven app, as you can see in the example uh, behind me. And I'll show you a few more examples. Secondly, Flutter is fast. We use a uh, Skia uh, graphics rendering engine. and uh, Flutter apps render over 60 frames per second, as you can see in this animation built by two dimensions. Um, and that's actually overlaid, as you can see, by text and other custom things. So you can create these highly powered animations that are jank free, um, because we've all been in that situation where you have an app and it's a little bit laggy. But obviously, we expect our apps to have really good performance. So as soon as it lags, you know, all the investment you put into the app can, can go, uh, go away. Thirdly, productive. So, Something we love at Flutter that we created because our developers love is called Stateful Hot Reload, which allows you to make changes to your code and literally in real time see them appear on the application. As you can see, what's happening right here. So we're tapping, we're changing the word click to tapped and hot reloading it, but we're also changing some of the business logic. So we're actually making it count downwards instead of upwards. And you can see it reloads that in uh, you know, half a second or so. So Finally, Flutter is open. And this is something that's really exciting to us, which is Flutter is entirely free and open source. In fact, a ton of our community members are probably here in person or watching online. And they've contributed a lot of code, packages, and plugins to Flutter itself. And because it's open source, we keep that nature with us as well. So a lot of things, you can go in and actually see all the code to it, um, as well as the demo we'll show you later. We'll actually share all the code there as well, so you can see how it was built. So these are our four pillars. And um, we've seen an incredible amount of momentum this past year with Flutter. So I want to show you a quick video of some examples of apps that have been built this past year. So those are cool apps, but obviously at the We Are Developers Conference, we want to show you the code behind it and actually do some of this live. So I want to bring up stage now my colleague, Matt Sullivan, who's going to hack on some Flutter code for you. Matt? 
There he is. Hello. This is the uh, part of the talk where things can go horribly wrong, which is why Martin asked me to do it. So we'll see where we get to. So I've got my Visual Studio code. I have my iOS simulator, which is what I decided to use today. And notice that my simulator is set for uh, German locale. So let's start this up. So I was trying to think, what would I do for 10 minutes um, on stage to show? And typically, I kind of build simple things from scratch. So I had to look around at some APIs, and I found that there was an open API for the Berlin transportation system. And I thought, that's cool. I'll hack on that. And then two weeks passed by, and I realized that I'd gone a little overboard. So what we're going to do today is look at some of the handiwork I've done and tinker around with a few pieces. So every app needs a splash screen. Splash screen. And what we see here is, as I work through it, for those of you who are not familiar with Flutter, just keep one thing in mind, that everything is a widget. So I have my splash screen widget here, which is my entire page. And then I have my build method. And what this does is I take a scaffold, which is a widget, and that gives me some basics around theming the page, which I have made this Berlin bright yellow. And then inside my page, I have a column, because widgets are not only UI components that you see, it also controls your layout. So what I have in here in my column is I have a couple of widgets, um, two of them, which are flexible. And one of them holds a transportation animation, and the other holds a flat button down the bottom. So let's take a look at this page and see what I can do. Well, let's say that I wanted to give my button more space. I could change my flex to 2. OK, so that's given me sort of 50-50. I could even go back, and I could give my uh, piece at the top more space. And so you can play around with it. And this is heart reload in action. So moving things around is all well and good. What we can also do is we can take a look at our transportation animation. animation. Um, this is using uh, the Flare plugin built by Two Dimensions. Um, and I see here that I have an animation of a bus, and I have my box fit. Well, this is nice, but maybe I want to play with this a little differently. Instead of containing it, why don't I try to cover the whole area with my bus animation? So there we go. I can blow it up a bit. That looks kind of cool. Well, maybe I actually want to fill the whole thing and not lose anything on the sides, and that stretches it a bit. And so what you can see here is as I play around with Flutter, I can um, see in the real time what's happening. So maybe I don't want a bus. Maybe I want a train. So I've got this cool train animation. That's nice. What else do I have? I have me uh, metro animation. And this metro animation is kind of cool. It doesn't quite fit in with the yellow. So maybe I could come up here, and I could instead make this colors.black and see what that looks like. And that looks a little better. And I get this cool tunnel effect going on. And so again, I can play around. So it's completely hidden my button. So let's undo that. Let's go back to bus for the time being. And that's great. So down the bottom, I have this flat button, which doesn't pop very much. It's not very exciting. I don't know. Um, how can I make it better? One thing to notice is that my text widget is actually using localization, because I've localized this both for English and for German. And we can check that out in a little bit. But let's say, oh, this is a boring button. Let's make this button a little more exciting. So I'm going to make this a raise button. And now it looks ugly. But at least you can see it. So that's nice. What we can also do is maybe we can make it the same color as um, my uh, page. OK, fits in a little better, but it's kind of hard to see. So let's elevate that a bit. Let's give it, f let's give it 10. OK, it's a bit much, but I can see it a little better now. And so that's nice. But um, it'd be nice. I don't like squares particularly much. Let's make our button a little more shaped. So let's put in a shape. And I have a handy, um, I cannot spell, which is fine. I have a handy rectangle border here. Let's get rid of this, because people can't see what I'm doing. I have a rectangle border widget, which seems to give some sort of circular radius. That's cool. And I can play around with what this looks like. Let's keep it at 20. And finally, I kind of want this to pop a bit. So let's stick a little border. And let's make that actually a little bigger and do that. And so there you go. This is a typical workflow for building UI in Flutter. I change my code. It heart reloads and pushes the code over in real time, um, near real time. And it um, makes a pop. 
um, and change. So this is cool. Now let's move on and actually look at what the app does. But before I do that, I want to make an announcement. And the one thing that developers absolutely love or hate is a new feature. So for the first time here, we're going to announce a brand new feature. And Martin, come on, come on, come up, come up. We're going to announce a brand new feature for Flutter, which I have dubbed, and I cannot spell. Oh, God. The Martin widget. <laughs> so there we go. Our big release and our who wants to see that again? You want to see that again? I'll do, I'll do, a, I'll do a hot restart here, and hopefully we're going to get this again. There we go. Are we going to have it? There we go. We have the Martin widget, <laughs> which is now going to be available for everyone to play with, and you are now immortalized in Flutter. So there you go, Martin. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to pay for that later. Um, let's move on. Here we go, I have my app, this is nice. I can give it a start and I can give it a final destination and it's gonna work out what routes I can take. Now I've got this um, preferences area and as I said before, I have translated this. So we've got some nice ways of handling internationalization in Flutter. And one thing I'm using is I'm using the uh, Open Transportation API um, for the Berlin Transportation System. And occasionally, it kind of fires me 502 errors, um, which it does irregularly. But I was like, this is going to happen on stage. So I'm going to put it in an offline mode. And I'm going to activate this now while I build things. But I'll switch it off at the end, and we'll see just, uh, we'll just see how we do. OK. So let's go back. Let's keep this in German. There we go. So here I have my search page. And this search page is actually entirely built using what we call a search delegate, which is another feature in Flutter. And you'll find that if you dig through the Flutter API, there are a lot of things in there that can make your lives easier. So this search delegate gives me a lot of things like it will build suggestions, or I can give suggestions in real time, I can build results, I can build some actions at the top. And so what I've done is I've created this, and I can search for something. And I'm going to use Bob, because that's the standard search term I use. And it's going to say, where are my places? Why does it does that? Because I haven't actually implemented building the places list yet. Because I wanted to show you what it was like building something a little more complicated, like a list in Flutter. So first off, how do you build a list in Flutter? Well, it's simply a case of using a list view. And you, know, you ask, well, what about like, you know, recycling your views when they're off screen? How does it handle thousands? Flutter takes care of that under the hood for you. You can create a list view, and you can let the uh, platform handle all those complexities for you. So list view takes some children. And what do I want to show here? Well, I've got a list of stops. And so that's not going to work. And why is that? That's because everything is a widget. So we need to give it a widget. So I can do some slightly fancy uh, functional piece here. And I'm going to map my stops to a text widget. And for the time being, I'm just going to show the name. And this gives me an iterable. So I go back to to list. And there we go. I have the world's ugliest, most boring list. It is a list. See, it moves. It doesn't click. It doesn't do anything. So this is clearly unacceptable. So let us use some more out of the box widgets with Flutter. We're going to create a list tile. And a list tile, we can give it a title, which I'm going to keep as my text. And I'm going to balance my braces. You know what, I'm going to do that to make it readable. And there we go. OK, so it's added some spacing. That's OK. Let's put in a leading. And you're like, wow, where's he coming up with all these? Well, what I can do is I can hover over, and I can see what's there. What's really cool is I can actually go to the source code for a list tile. And I can see how the whole thing is implemented. Because all of the UI code in Flutter is written in Dart. All the source is available and compiles into your app when you actually compile it. So you can actually dig in. And you can learn and customize and do all sorts of things that you want with the existing out of the uh, box. So I'll go back to creating my leading. Um, and I'm going to make this an icon just because quickness. Icons.train. And OK, there we go. It's looking a little better. Let's, um, I want to know, is it going to be a bus? Is it going to be a train? Is it going to be a, the, the underground? So in a subtitle here, I know that we have the stop types of strings. This gives me a list of strings, not very useful. So let's join them together. 
And uh, that's also not very useful because everything is a widget. And so I can make this text. And I can do that. And then notice that it's actually styling the text for me based on where it is in the list tile. So this is great. Still doesn't do anything. That's not very useful. So finally, I can give it a gesture. And because this takes a closure, and because I've used the search delegate, that gives me a handy close function, which takes returns my value, which in this case is my stop. So now, theoretically, hopefully, if I haven't messed any of this up, I can go and I can click here. OK, so it's, it's, it's passed it back. Here, I'm going to say, well, we want to go to where we currently are. And I think that's the stop. And then that goes, and that pulls the data. And then now this is all of um, our stops. Now, this is cache data, so the times are wrong. Um, so as I wrap up, let's just see if this um, behaves itself um, over the internet. Now, just to show you, I'm doing, you know, he's doing behind the scenes API stuff. It's probably very complicated and whatnot. How do I make an API call? Well, let's take a list. This is how I pull back my list of locations. And all I'm doing in here is, you know, super boring. I'm creating a URL string. I'm calling this fetch data um, uh, function. And notice that this returns a future. And Dart is asynchronous, like JavaScript, by nature, which means you can do the whole um, make a call on I.O. It's going to be non-blocking. So I don't have to worry about threads, processes, new tasks. I can just make it, and the platform should continue to behave itself in terms of its rendering time. So I'm going to get the body, and then I do some JSON decoding magic where I map them into the appropriate data types. And then to make the actual call itself is one line of code, and that's it. That's how you make a HTTP call in Flutter. Um, you could either return the future. I'm awaiting here, so I can handle that. And I do a little bit of error handling, which you hopefully won't see. And let's see now if this actually works. Let's go back here. I'm going to switch this off. Uh, I'm going to pull this down. So hang on, am I on now? Yes, I am. And so I'm going to search for, what did I test earlier, Brandenburg. Yay, there we go. OK, we have internet access, and it's working. So I can go to Brandenburg, and I can click on this. And it updates, and there we go. So that is at actually working through our Wi-Fi here um, over to that. And I know it's not you know, super amazing, but this took me like you know, a few days of hacking together and playing around with it. So hopefully what you take away from this is the developer experience with Flutter. Because Flutter is great. You can do all these cool UI things. But I enjoy when it works standing up here showing you all this, because this is how I wrote this Flutter app. This is how I played around with it. I am also the world's worst person for styling and UI and everything else. And you may think this is terrible, but you should see what I typically build. And with Flutter, I actually produce something that's vaguely uh, useful. So with that, I will hand it back to Martin. Thanks, Matt. Never thought this job would come with my own widget. That was pretty interesting. So um, <laughs> I want to show you this slide really quick just to show you the actual tech of what behind what Matt was just using. So everything Matt was building is part of the Flutter framework. And Flutter is written completely using Dart, the programming language. Um, so that gives Matt and Flutter developers control over a lot of things within the frameworks, like the widgets, animations, and gestures. Now, all of that sits on top of, a, of an engine made with C++ that uses Skia. And this allows us to have runners to go to iOS, Android, and we also have a JavaScript implementation for the web, which I'll touch up upon. Now, I mentioned Dart. Um, and the Dart team actually is at Google as well. So they sit right with us in the Flutter team. And we worked in the last few years very hard to re-engineer Dart to really work well with Flutter. So you can actually go to dart.dev to see the new site and some of the new features. But here are some of the pillars that, um, that make Dart a really great programming language for Flutter. So I want to talk briefly about momentum. Um, you know, just a year ago, uh, if I asked who knew about Flutter here, probably most people wouldn't raise their hands. Um, but we've seen a lot of momentum at, within Google and outside of Google with Flutter. Um, here are just a few stats uh, that I found. Um, you know, I don't have to read them. Uh, but also, it, Stack Overflow, which I know he, we just heard from the CEO, um, said that Flutter was ranked number three most loved toolkit. So, you know, and the reason I'm saying this is not to convince you to use Flutter. It's just to encourage you to just check it out, do some of our code labs. It's free and open source. So within an hour, you can be doing some of that hot reloading that Matt has uh, done. Um, 
So I mentioned some apps that use Flutter. Um, it started within Google, um, and we use it a lot internally. Uh, some examples are our Google Ads app. Um, we just announced assistant support for Flutter at Google I.O. Um, there are a few examples here as well. Uh, Massif, for example, a French insurance company, which over 5 million users. I believe they're here somewhere as well. Um, just build their app with Flutter. And we have one up there that's uh, you know, relevant to where we are today. So um, instead of me telling you about them, I wanted to bring up uh, Yosef from BMW to give you his perspective on using Flutter. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Over the last couple of years, the complexity of building and operating an app for a premium brand like BMW kind of exploded. Multiple platforms, um, a lot of form factors, and the need to maintain multiple apps over different brands means that keeping the quality high isn't easy anymore. On top of that, BMW is operating in a highly regulated market and is convinced that we always have to deliver the best quality to our users. All of that together means that the efforts of building and maintaining and testing and running an application in the BMW group is actually quite significant. So our teams are constantly on the lookout for technologies that help us to both improve the quality and the throughput of our work. All of those technologies fell short in one way or another until we looked at Flutter. So what got us interested in Flutter was the integration in Visual Studio Code, the quality of the application that comes out, and the performance of the application that we see at the end. What got us really excited was the support of the community out there, and of course, the amazing team at Google. And on top of that, coding in Dart and Flutter was actually quite fun again, compared to everything we did before. So after a very thorough evaluation period, our teams decided to go up to management and uh, highly recommend Flutter for future development. So after playing with Flutter for, with himself, Mr. Guy Duncan that you see on the slides here, CTO of the connected company within the BMW group had to say the following. By combining Dart and Flutter, we have the first true cross-platform mobile toolkit, and we feel it's a game changer to ensure feature parity for digital touch points and IoT. By moving forward with the world-class tooling, automation, and modern functional programming patterns, we can improve feature cycle time, security, and cost of delivery of features for the business. So for our teams, Flutter is sheer development pleasure. We can deliver features quicker and with higher quality to the business. Um, we really enjoy the theming capabilities of Flutter, and we are interested to see what we can do with Flutter for the web and desktop in the future. The open source nature of Flutter was a big reason for us to commit to it, and that means we also want to give back. So over the next couple of months, we will open source a couple of libraries we built internally to the community. In fact, there's already a couple out there. You might have seen them already. BMW is the ultimate driving machine, and we believe that Flutter is the ultimate front-end developed machine. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yosef. So one of the pillars I mentioned earlier was beautiful. And as you can see behind me, you know, the pattern in apps today, award-winning apps, are really about beautiful animations and design. Right? That's why we have all these custom components to it. And uh, that's something that we, as Flutter from the beginning, knew. So that's why I mentioned we provide ways to make it look like iOS and Android applications, but we also want you to be able to customize everything. Um, and so I thought. What I want to do today is actually preview a video uh, that we made for this conference of a company based in Europe that uh, created their app using Flutter because of the fact that it allows them to really express themselves in this brand-driven design. So let me show you Reflectly's story. Beautiful design was the critical success factor for Reflectly. Reflectly is a journaling app that we created to counteract the stress that comes with social media and technology. Digital well-being is important now more than ever, so our goal for this app is to provide a safe space and break from the stress that technology can bring. Therefore, this app must be personalized, safe, and beautiful so all users can open up and feel they have a unique relationship with Reflectly. The beginnings of Reflective surely was very humble. We were a very small team and only two engineers. However, we wanted to reach users on both iOS and Android. So we built the first version of Reflectly using a traditional cross-platform framework. 
But given that Reflectly is all about beautiful design and user experience, we felt restricted in our ability to deliver a consistent personalized design for both platforms. For example, frequently shadows were cut off and animation were always sluggish. And so it became clear to us that we needed to find a new solution. And luckily we found Flutter. And it just worked. So out of the box, we got an extreme amount of value that we can then use and we knew we had to use in Reflectly. Um, and that was kind of a key deciding moment. And from the first line of Flutter code was written, we were done in only two and a half months. That included some large new features like our entire premium subscription implementation. Flutter paints every pixel on the screen directly. So now we don't have to worry anymore about differences between iOS and Android renderer content. It is still adapts to the unique characteristics of each platform. We can keep a common code base and still build iOS and Android specific UI where it's appropriate. It was a revelation for us that we were actually able to move so fast while still not compromising on our visions. So Flutter is great because it gives you control of every single pixel on the screen, but it also allows you to actually structure your code in a way that's maintainable and refactorable. For example, to create the elegant and informative new view transitions, we use the Hero widget. And because we were able to nest basic widgets across the Flutter framework, our initial build of the UI was quick and effective while still maintaining a great performance. So we deployed the app to millions of users all around the world, and they loved it. After we launched Reflectly 2.0, one thing that made us particularly happy was how well the design was received. We thought it was beautiful, but it was great to hear that from our users as well. Overall, we're very satisfied with how Flutter is performing. It has enabled us to build the beautiful UI that we envisioned, which got us featured in Apple's new apps we love. It has cut our development time in half, and we can release new features simultaneously on Android and iOS. And now, with Flutter for the web, we can deploy our existing code base for Android, iOS, and the web. With Flutter, we were able to deliver this beautiful experience to millions of users. And month over month, we are seeing double-digit growth. Cool. So, at I.O. A, a month ago, we announced Flutter was already in 1.0 but we announced Flutter 1.5, um, and Flutter's main focus was mobile. But our vision statement is to expand beyond phones, and we actually announced the technical preview of Flutter for the web. And as you see in Reflectly's example, a lot of pe people are already playing around with that. So you today can go and actually build things on the web using Flutter, which compiles dark code to JavaScript. We're also experimenting with other uh, places you can use Flutter, such as desktop and other embedded form factors. And here's one example, which is New York Times Ken Ken Puzzle app. Now, they, the New York Times, as you know, famously for their crosswords and other games, needed to build this so that it runs everywhere. And they actually built the whole thing using Flutter, which runs on mobile, web, and desktop. And using that link behind me, you can actually go to it and play with it right now. It's also in our booth here if you want to check it out. Now I want to bring Matt back on because I thought it'd be fun to take his transportation app and actually put it on the web. So let's bring Matt back on and see if he's uh, ready to do this. Matt? There he is. <laughs> Ooh, it's gone to sleep. There we go. So doing live demos, things can always go wrong. And then Martin said, why don't you come up and demo a technical preview? And I'm like, oh, that sounds like really fun. Let's see what happens. So Flutter for Web is in technical preview. And I'm going to undo my changes here, because what I have done is I have hacked on this code a little bit, and I have ported it to Flutter for Web. So I'm going to do some Git stuff here. And you can say, uh, well, why, why do you have two different versions? Well, we're in technical preview. Um, so we have a lot of things implemented um, for the web. And there's a couple of things not quite there yet. Um, I've taken out the animations to start with. Um, and I've also disabled the internationalization for the moment because we're still working and getting the, uh, the material pieces of internationalization for those widgets um, in as well. But the rest of it is pretty unchanged. So we don't need you running anymore. Um, 
as you can see over here, like the code is pretty much the same. I've tweaked a couple of things, but it's still pretty much the same code base. So how do you actually get this compiling and running on the web? Well, ultimately, you're going to use the Flutter tool. It's going to do everything for you. Um, at the moment, in Technical Preview, we have um, given people a web server, um, web dev, um, and that will go through the whole compilation process and then start to serve, if I'm lucky, um, my application locally. So at the moment, it's just going through the build process. What else are we going to need? Well, we're going to need a uh, web browser. And what I'm going to do here is I am going to switch on developer uh, just so we have um, the uh, console. And I also want to show this um, as it would look like in a phone because I did no optimization for landscape. It looks terrible, um, but it looks OK in portrait, so we're going to stick with that. So let's take a look here. Um, it looks like it's still doing a little bit of building. So it's going on there. Maybe I should have cached this beforehand. But because I was doing it live, I thought I'd empty all the caches. And there we go. So this is now built essentially what you saw as the same app with a couple of differences. You'll see now that I now have a web folder. And the web folder has index.html. And I could do a bunch of things here. But basically, all I'm doing is I'm serving up um, the app. Um, uh, from JavaScript. And then I have a new main. And all this is doing is saying, let's initialize uh, the web component tree and then serve the app as usual. So the only two things I've had to add to get this um, to work. So moment of truth. Let's go here. And we're going to go Google Host 8080. And fingers crossed. Still crossed. There we go. So here is the app. Remember, the animations are switched off, and I replaced it with an icon. But here is the app running in, um, in, in the web. So I can tap here. And you can see I have essentially the same styling. We see we have the shading. I haven't changed anything here. Um, I have my pop-up, which is smoother the second time around. Again, technical preview. And you notice I've taken this out. I'm going to put this back into offline mode just to quickly demonstrate that this works. I'll try it again at the end. So I'll search for there. And I chose this at random. And we'll search for Messy. And, and it just renders. So without any real change of my code, I have a web app which behaves thusly. Now, you're like, OK, well, that's all well and good. You're using cache data. Let's see what happens if you actually try to use the HTTP libraries and the asynchronicity and everything else. Well, I wouldn't try this if I didn't think it would work. So let's switch off offline. And let's go back here. And let's change our start to, I came from the airport. So let's put in airport. There we go. So that has pulled everything from the internet using the same um, code as we did in the app, which I think is kind of cool. And then for the last thing, let's see if this works. There we go. And we have our route and destinations. Can anyone spot the bug? It's not. That was two hours ago. Somebody made, kept this in UTC. We're plus two. I'll fix that. I only noticed that last night, and I'm like, I'm not going to break everything now. So yeah, my app has bugs. So there we go. Very little work. I stripped out some of the more um, uh, uh, complex pieces of it. But we are working hard to get them in. Literally, you can pull down master, and there will be fixes on a daily. Uh, there will be fixes in there on a daily basis of working hard on it. So hopefully, that's given you a flavor for Flutter compiling to JavaScript and running on the web. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Matt. I want to close with something that you guys built with the community. So we recently finished a comp test called Flutter Create, which challenged developers all over the world to build apps with Flutter in under 5 kilobytes of dark code. Now, most of you know what 5 kilobytes is. It's less than half a second in an MP3 file. It's absolutely very, very minimal code. So when we launched this, we were curious to see how creative people can be. Um, so I'm actually going to show you a video we put together that demonstrates a lot of the submissions we received in over 60 different countries from this competition.
This was awesome. Um, and here are some of the winning apps from the competition. Uh, the Piano one actually code labbed their entire entry before it finished. So you can see how they wrote everything. I mean, all of these are actually open source. So you can go to flutter.dev slash create and check them all out. But besides just the winners, this competition was really not just for winning, but it was to allow people to experiment with Flutter and have fun with it. So we got some really cool stories out of it, too. Someone told me that their submission turned into a full-time job. Someone else said that their whole team asked for a week vacation just to work on it. So it was really cool to see the impact that this had. So I want to thank you for being here. We have a booth in Hall A. Please come talk to us. We'll be here all of today and tomorrow. Um, again, I mentioned the demos we did on stage. There's the uh, repo, the link to it. So if you want to check it out on GitHub. Uh, and our website is flutter.dev. And uh, come find us. Thank you very much. <laughs>